Salah Kutabi Akana. Hey guys, it's Coach Carroll here with a tutorial video over Vector Edition uh, showing you how to solve this problem. Now, if you're uh, watching this video and you have not attempted the problem at all, you have not tried it, you've not struggled with it, don't know what you're doing, um, yeah, you should turn this video off, try it yourself. You're not going to learn anything just by watching it. Okay, um, maybe you will. But uh, you need to try it yourself, guys. Okay, so struggle with it. Uh, talk to your friends if you don't know what's going on in the problem. See if they can help you. And um, yeah, all right, here we go. So I'll read the problem and we'll go from there. Uh, vector B has this vector here. Vector B has a magnitude of 12 units. And vector A here has a magnitude of 10 units. So that means the length of this vector is 10 units and the length of vector B there is 12 units long. So determine the magnitude of the resultant of the vector sum R. So R is the resultant of the sum A plus B. So we simply want to add the two vectors. They also want us to find the angle theta x, which R makes with the positive x-axis there, positive x-axis. And we need to solve this problem both graphically and algebraically. Okay, so I'll start out with a graphical approach now. Uh, two ways to add vectors graphically. Uh, one, we can use the parallelogram law or we can use the triangle rule here. Um, it just, it just starting with this picture right here, uh, the vectors are the problem you know, the picture, I'm sorry, is already set up to use the parallelogram law because uh, the uh, the two tails of the vectors already start in the same position here. I'm sorry about that. Already start in the same position there. So I can just form a parallelogram with these two sides A and B that I have already. So I'm going to start on the head of vector B and sketch a line all right, there that this line is parallel to vector A and now sketching the other side of the parallelogram it's going to be parallel to vector B here that starts on the head of vector A you can start on the head of vector A and this line is parallel to vector B and the resultant is the diagonal so the diagonal between these right there that's the resultant vector R okay so notice the, uh, the tail of the resultant vector starts at the tail of vectors A and B where they meet and points to the opposite corner here. Okay, so uh, just from this uh, very rough kind of ugly sketch here, I can get an idea of what the answer is. Uh, so the second part of the question asks for theta x. That's the angle that the resultant vector makes with a positive x-axis. So that is this angle here. So I can already get a guess of that. Maybe it's going to be maybe 80 some degrees, something about uh, around there, about 80 degrees and also the length of this vector which would be the magnitude of the resultant um, I mean it's going to be greater than 12 obviously 12 is the length of vector B maybe I don't know uh, 15, 16, 17 units long something like that so I've already got an idea of what the answer is going to be okay so now let's actually go through and get uh, get some numbers for it okay so I'm going to sketch the two vectors I'm, I'm, I'm going to use a triangle approach First thing I'll do here is I'll sketch the coordinate system. I'm going to try to do it nice and big. There's the, the X. Ooh, sorry about that. I'm getting used to drawing on this thing here. That wasn't a good line, was it? Okay. A little better. Still not great. Okay, there's X and Y. So, let me grab a red now. We'll start out with vector A. It doesn't matter if you do A plus B, A plus B like this, because that's the same thing as B plus A. It doesn't matter. I'm going to start out with vector A. Okay. So let's say there's vector A. And now for the triangle rule, I'm going to start with, there we go, that was vector A. Now vector B, I'm going to start the tail of vector B on the head of vector A. Draw it. There we go. That's about vector B there. And notice I drew the length longer than uh, the length of B, longer than the length of A, because it has a length of 12 units. Okay, and A has a length of 10 units. So I'm trying to make my picture approximately the scale here. So now that I've got vector A and vector B, the resultant vector. 
connects the two. So it, so it finishes out the triangle. The tail of the resultant vector will start at the tail of vector A and point all the way up there to vector B. There's the resultant vector. Okay, so now I've got a triangle here. Uh, so the first part of the question asks for the magnitude of the resultant vector right there. Okay, so the magnitude means the length of length of that line. That line's the or the vectors are the vectors pointing to the head of vector B. Okay, so I have a triangle here, and to find something out about a triangle, if I know three things about it, whether three sides. Uh, two angles on a side, three angles, doesn't matter. I can find anything else out about the triangle. So what do I know about this triangle? Okay, well, do I know the length of this side? Yeah, the, the length of this side is the magnitude of vector A. That's 10 units long. Then what about the length of this side? Yeah, vector B has a length of 12 units. Okay, so I know the length of this side and the length of this one. Well, that's only two things. One, two there. Now I need a third thing. I don't know the length of R yet. That's what I'm looking for. I don't know uh, these angles that the resultant vector makes, but can I find what about this angle here? Okay, well I do know what do I know here? I know the direction of vector A based on this three, four, five triangle. So this vec this angle right here, let me call that angle theta, I can find that by doing the tan inverse of three over four. Okay, so this angle and that triangle, find this angle by doing it in arctan, three over four, that angle is obviously the same as this one. Okay, that angle there is 36.87 degrees. Okay, so I know this angle. You say, well, why did I need this angle? <laughs> because this is the one that I'm looking for. Well, what if I sketch a horizontal line right here? This, this angle right here, that angle theta, is this angle theta, so I know this angle is the 36.87. Now, if I can just find this angle, I'll call that angle alpha there. Then I can find the, that big angle, we'll call that beta, right? So angle beta would be simply theta plus alpha. And so now once I find this angle, and I know three things about the triangle. I know this length, the angle beta, and this length, and I can find everything else. Okay? So, what's this angle alpha? Well, that's this 60 degrees there. See, the 60 degrees is the angle of vector B up from the horizontal. I have a horizontal line here, so that angle alpha is the angle from the horizontal to vector B. So that angle alpha there this alpha is 60 degrees. What's theta? Theta's there. Okay. So that means that angle beta 96.87 degrees. Okay. So let's sketch. Let's do a cleaner sketch here. This side is 12, this side is 10, and this angle is 96.87 degrees. Okay, so to find the length of R, the length of this side here is going to be the magnitude of the resultant. Uh, this set up to use law of cosines. Law of cosines says that if I know, well, I'm sorry, you can use law of cosines easily if you know two sides and the angle 
in between those two sides then you can find the opposite side. So the opposite side is R, so law of cosines says R squared is going to be the 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times the length of the two sides times the cosine of the angle in between them, 96.87 degrees there. So I can solve for R. R comes out to be 16.51. So this is the magnitude. Notice when I wrote this R here, I do not have a vector symbol over the top like that because I'm I'm not writing it in component form, I'm just writing the magnitude. So what are the units of this? 16.51? Well, we're not told, we're just told that they're units. So 16.51, that's the answer to the magnitude of the resultant vector. Okay, now let's find this angle theta x that R makes with positive x-axis here. So this, that angle there, Sorry, let me use a different color there. Use purple. So this angle here is what we're looking for. That's theta x. Well, theta x, we can, we can do this a couple ways. Graphically, let's look at this. Theta x it would be the addition of this vector, sorry, that angle, that angle plus this angle here this angle that was the angle theta that was the 36.87 now can I find this angle then well if I know well yes we can because we know three things about the triangle right I know this length I also now know this length I know this length I know this angle it's just a matter of using some trigonometry rules to be able to find this angle here, we'll call it angle phi. Okay, so how could I find that? Well, uh, let's use the law of sines to try to find, law of sines to try to find this angle phi. Okay, and we're doing this again, sorry, because theta x we saw is going to be theta plus phi. Okay, where well, we already know theta x theta right here to be 36.87 degrees, so what is phi? Okay, so law of sines says that this ratio of the sine of an angle, we'll say the angle phi, over the leg opposite to that angle, so here's the angle phi, the leg of the triangle opposite, opposite to that, and in this case is 12, okay, uh, and this ratio is the same for, for every part of the triangle. The ratio of an angle to the leg opposite is to the leg opposite that angle is the same for all angles in the in the triangle. So I also know this angle here so that means let's say the sine of 96.87 degrees over the length of the side opposite to that which is this length which is what we just found 16.51 there you go. So now I have an equation with the only unknown in the equation is being phi. And I can solve that. Phi to be, there we go, 46.2 degrees. Okay. So now let's plug this phi in. Draw my nice little line over here to right there. So theta x is this 36.87 plus that 46.2. And what does that come out to be? That's the, not the 83 degrees. I'm going to round that. Okay. 83 degrees. And that actually looks about right. This angle here looks about 83 degrees. So we, we found the magnitude of the resultant vector to be 16.51 units. But remember, a vector has magnitude and direction. And so we also found the direction. That angle theta x is also 83 degrees. Now that's the uh, algebraic solution, or sorry, excuse me, that's the graphical solution there. Uh, I'll have another video to show the algebraic solution of this problem.